Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Let's Play Forge. Last time we traveled to a random uh, commander world and we defeated one of the commanders in it. Specifically we defeated Alice in Wonderland, I think was her name. And we did quite, fair, quite well for ourselves. Now we get to choose another uh, opponent. We have Immortus as our as an opponent, which is very hard, but instead of choosing him, I will choose a random opponent. So we will be fighting against literally anyone. Right now we, we will be fighting against Dark Holiday. Let's play. I will keep this first hand, why not? We're going first. Let's summon a Prowling Silverpart, which is a force left free cat snake creature, which has the effect of Prowling Silverpart can't be countered and the creature spells you control can't be countered. Let's summon him. Now let's summon a giant spider, which is a 2 slash 4 spider creature, which has reach, which means that this creature can block creatures with flying. Let's alpha strike him for Prowling Silverpart. And there's nothing else we can summon because we do not have the mana for anything else. So let's just alpha strike him with everything that we have. Still can do anything with just this. So let's... Uh, I mean we can summon cross android which would cost us only one green mana and two other mana. But I don't want to do to summon cross android without paying his kicker cost as well. Which would mean uh, paying an additional... Uh, one green mana and four other mana besides the mana that it costs to summon him in order to to uh, activate his kicker effect which the kicker effect is that you gain 10 life which feels like it you it, it would be too worthwhile to not do so let's alpha strike him once again although we might not get to summon anything else he finally summons a Guild Spire Avenger, which is a 2 slash 2 human soldier creature, which has the effects of Exalted, which means that whenever this a creature you control attacks alone, that creature gets plus 1 plus 1 until the end of turn. And for tapping it, destroy target creature that dealt damage to you this turn. Interesting. Now let's summon an, initi an Initiate's Companion, which is a 3 slash 1 uh, cat creature, which has the effect of whenever an Initiate's Companion deals combat damage to a player, untap target creature or land. Let's do that. Now let's Alpha Strike him. He is almost dead. Uh, he summons a Merc Fiend Liege, which is a 4 slash 4 horror creature, which has the effect of... Other green creatures you control get plus one plus one, and uh, other blue creatures you control get plus one plus one, and uh, untap all green and or blue creatures you control during each player's untap step. Interesting. Let's summon a uh, Feral Prowler, which is a once left free cat creature, which has the effect of when Feral Prowler dies, draw a card. He's screwed either way, I'll just alpha strike him, and even if he will try blocking me with his Mark Fiend Liege. His Mark Fiend Liege is the only creature on his side of the field, so he can only block one of my creatures, and he's only at two life, so the other uh, two creatures which will not get blocked by him will still get their attacks through and uh, kill uh, and finish him off. So that was quite easy, we did quite well for ourselves, we removed from his deck a Band Charm. Which is an instant with the effect of choose one, destroy target artifact or put target creature on the bottom of its owner's library or counter target instant spell. Yeah, that sounds like it would have been an annoying card to deal with. Let's keep this deck. Yeah, we're off to a good start. I really like this starting hand. We're going second because we won last time and he lost. Let's summon a fellow prowler. So yeah, we're ready to attack him next turn. Now he casts a Crystallization, which is an Enchantment Aura card, which has the effect of Enchant Creature. Enchanted Creature can't, atta can't attack or block. When, en when Enchanted Creature becomes the target of, of a spell or ability, remove that creature from the game. So he used that on our Feral Prowler to mess with us. However, we can summon a different Feral Prowler and we'll be good to go afterwards. 
Now he cast a uh, Rock's War, War Monk, which is a free slash four Rhino Monk creature, which has Life Link. That's a bit annoying. Let's summon Elite Cat Warrior, which is a two slash three creature, which has Forest Walk. A uh, forest walk means that if defending player has any forest in play, elite cat warrior can't be intercepted. Forests are in play regardless of whether they're tapped or untapped. Now he does have a forest in play which is right here, so that means that he, this effect will, will indeed uh, kick in for him. Now he summons a Guild Spire Avenger, which is a 2 slash 2 human soldier creature, which has the effect of Exalted, which means whenever a creature you control attacks alone, that creature gets plus 1 plus 1 until the end of turn, and for tapping it, destroy target creature that deal damage to you this turn. Now he's attacking me with his Rock Swarm Monk, and uh, because his Rock Swarm Monk has a uh, uh, for toughness, even if I were to block him with both my Feral Prowler and my Elite Cat Warrior, I would not be able to to do anything against him because uh, my Elite Cat wa my Elite Cat Warrior uh, my Elite Cat Warrior's uh, power two power combined with my Feral Prowler's one power would m reach a maximum of three, which is still under the the five that the raw war monk had wait didn't he have four toughness why does he have five now i think it's one of the effects of one of his one of his cards i don't know which one it is though i maybe i can see in the log ah it's the exalted effect right so it's the it's from Guildspire Avengers Exalted Effect. Because Rock's War Monk was attacking by itself, uh, Guildspire Avengers Exalted Effect kicked in and it gave it plus one plus one. So that's even more annoying. So I will let that attack pass through because I wouldn't be able to block it. I mean, I could have blocked it with both my Feral Power and, and the Elite Cat Warrior, but they would have just been uh, attacked afterwards by his Rock's War Monk in whatever order he would have wanted, and that would have sucked. So I instead allowed him to get his attack through. <coughs> Let's summon... Can we summon a Panther Warriors? We cannot yet. We do not have the mana. Let's end our turn for now. Now he's attacking us with both uh, his creatures, both his Guild Spire Avenge Avenger and his uh, Rock War uh, Monk. Now I kind of want to target his Rock War Monk and destroy it because uh, it's, it's kind of annoying me. So let's uh, let's block his Rock War Monk with our. Uh, Elite Cat Warrior. Now, normally that would not have been enough to destroy his Rock's War Monk. Because our Elite Cat Warrior has only 2 power and his Rock's War Monk has 4 toughness. And his Rock's War Monk has 3 power and my Elite Cat Warrior has only 3 toughness. So, uh, at the end of the day, if the damage calculations are done normally, his Rock's uh, War Monk would have been strong enough to destroy our Elite Cat Warrior from this blocking, and our Elite Cat Warrior would not have been strong enough to destroy his Rock's War Monk in return. But I can still cast the um, Gift of Strength, though, on my Elite Cat Warrior to have it uh, uh, re receive a plus 3, plus 3, and also reach until the end of turn. I can do this because this is an instant card, and I'm, that means I can cast it at any point in time. And then I would have had sufficient strength to to uh, to re to make our Elite Cat Warrior be unbeatable by his uh, Rock Swarm Monk. So let's do that. Let's cast this on our Elite Cat Warrior. And now that was strong enough to completely destroy him. Now he summons uh, an, a stoic uh, angel, which is a 3 slash 4 uh, 
angel creature which has both flying and vigilance and it also has the effect of players can't untap more than one creature during their untap steps interesting let's summon panther warriors which is a six left free pa uh, creature i think that will be worthwhile now let's alpha strike him he blocked uh, all of our creatures, so that was unfortunate. Uh, he, he killed uh, our our, uh, our our feral prowler, but because in the process a feral prowler died because it was blocked by his stoic angel, a feral prowler's effect uh, kicked in, and I we drew an, an additional card. Okay, let's end our turn for now. Now he summons a Morg fiend leech. And he's attacking us with our Glitz Spire Avenger, though. Can I block him? I mean, do I even want to block him? You know what? Yeah, let's block him. Uh, his Glitz Spire Avenger is strong enough to kill our Panther Warriors, but also our Panther Warriors are, are strong enough to destroy his Glitz Spire Avenger. So I think this is a worthwhile uh, block attempt. Now let's summon Skell Behemoth, which is a 6 7 crocodile creature, which is hexproof, which means that this creature can be the target of spells or abilities your opponent controls. And now let's just... Uh, actually, actually, let's not alpha strike him, let's just leave it, this as it is. Now he's attacking us with his Stoic Angel. And uh, because his Stoic Angel has flying, it cannot be blocked. And also because it has vigilance, uh, it cannot, it didn't tap uh, either. So that's annoying. And now he summoned the uh, Bent Sure Blade, which is a 2 slash 1 human soldier creature, which has the effect of as long as you control another multicolored permanent, Bent Sure Blade gets plus 1 plus 1 and has first strike. That's definitely annoying. Let's summon Sifter Worm, which is a 7 slash 7 worm creature, which has trample and also the effect of when Sifter Worm enters the battlefield, scry free, which means uh, scry free, then reveal the top card of your library. You gain life equal to that card's converted into mana cost. So sure, let's do this. And let's also, yeah, let's uh, do it in this order. Is this the order that I want? Four and three. Yeah, I think this is indeed the order that I want. Now let's just alpha strike him with everything that we have. He will block our skill behemoth with both his Merc Fiend Liege and his uh, Bent Sure Blade, which has first strike now. So let's uh, let's destroy his uh, Bent Sure Blade first, and then his Merc Fiend Liege. So this is acceptable. We got rid of some really annoying creatures from inside of the field by doing what we did. Now he summons another Guild Spire Avenger and the Temporal. He casts a Temporal Spring, which is a sorcery which has the effect of put target permanent on top of its owner's library. And he did that with my own creature, which is quite annoying. And we just died. So that was really annoying. He had uh, access to some really annoying uh, cards. Yeah, let's keep this hand. This is an acceptable hand to have for now. He summons a Trigon uh, a Predator, which is a 2 slash 3 beast creature which has flying and also the ability of whenever Trigon a Predator deals combat damage to a player, you may destroy target artifact or enchantment that player controls. Interesting. He did that to me right now. Let's summon a Prowling Sepulpart, which is a 4 slash 3 cat snake creature, which has the effect of uh, Prowling Sepulpart can be countered and creature spells you control can be countered. So let's summon it and I'll, let's also use a Cartouche of Strength on it to give it plus 1 plus 1 and trample and also have it deal damage directly to his uh, Trigon Predator. So let's do that. And that's about it for right now. He casts a, a, a crystallization on my prowling sample part though to prevent me from doing anything else with it. So that's annoying. 
Now he summons a Knight of New Alara, which is a 2 slash 2 human knight creature, which has the effect of each other multicolored creature you control gets plus 1 plus 1 for each of its colors. That's annoying. Let's uh, get rid of it with our ambuscade and our prowling self apart. Wait, why did that not kill his Knight of New Alara? That should have killed it, right? Now he summoned a Treva Renewer. That's annoying. Can I just get a proper creature? Yeah, this is not good. We just... I think we lost. I'm pretty sure we lost. Yeah, we lost. That was an annoying uh, opponent to deal with. I guess I never should have... I, I should have mulliganed when I got only... Uh, when I've only gotten... Uh, of forest cards in my hand to begin with, but I just uh, held out like an idiot when I shouldn't have. I, I should have mulliganed those cards and gotten something that would have been immediately useful for me. Oh well, that's the way the dice roll sometimes. So uh, let's, uh, let's refill our deck. Right now we only have 57 cards in our deck because, uh, you know, that's the way that we are right now now let's uh, let's sort by power actually i want the uh, cards which are really powerful yeah let's add some bitter bow sharpshooters in our deck and that's it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to get in touch with me, I have a Mastodon account as well as a Matrix room that you can join, details of which you can find in the description of this video. And in, and in the meantime, see you next time.